Buenos Aires, mis piratas. How are you on this wonderful Saturday? I'm great. And we had our steak tonight. And I hope you guys had a great Saturday. It's not over yet for y'all because some of y'all will be going out, kicking up your heels. If you do, let me know what you're doing. I like to know what you guys are doing. It makes me have fun through your eyes. And uh, I hope you guys are going to have a fantastic Saturday and the rest of your weekend. In the middle, in the, in the middle, in the meantime, we have this gigantic stuff over here to get through, which is going to take a few days, but that's okay, because all we got is time, right? <laughs> all we got is time. So, I don't know where we left off. I know I was making a joke about a Timex. Where did it go? Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Did anybody figure out that one yet? It says Milan. Is it checked up on the back? Uh. Yeah, it is. But still. Maybe it's Indiglo. That's what it says. I think this is one of those rubber things that came in around the late 90s, early 2000s. Somebody could use it for parts, I'm sure. So t there it goes into the parts slash craft bag. So let's see what we got. We got a couple of more. Uh, no, I bet you we got more than a couple of these. Um, they call these things Mardi Gras beads, the ones that are stuck, you know. Hmm. Now this is, this is, um, I thought this was maybe stone, but it's not. It's uh, acrylic, and it's, I guess it's two-tone on purpose. I'm not sure. It's going to be a buck, though. It's a bracelet. All right. So, this is a little necklace. What in the heck is that? Well, this got moisture right here. I think this came out. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is like called a rosette style. Okay, are you out of focus already? Okay. No. This is a rosette style. Not actually rosette, but it's a style of it. A spring ring clasp. This, I think, is um, aluminum. It is like 3D. It has a thickness about it because... There it is in focus. It's not mash flat. It's going to be a dollar because it's aluminum. Num. Okay. This is a Mardi Gras bead thingy. I think. This is jacked up. Okay. Taking it off the card. So I can get it out of here. Hey. Well. It might come out someday. Let's see. I know that a lot of y'all think that tangles are annoying. I like tangles because I found the best stuff in tangles because nobody likes to untangle them. Therefore, good stuff gets put in here. Right? Give me. I found more sterling and gold and tangles than not. Mm, I think this might be a clue as to not take this apart. Mm -hmm. uh, that's cute. I like to take tangles apart. The rewards are... What is that? That is one of our vehicles going off. Well. 
Hmm. Oh, maybe husband had it's fixing a thunderstorm. It was thunder booming a minute ago. Maybe he had to go out and shut the gate before it came down. And made sure the doors are locked and then set off the alarm. That's possible. Nobody ever comes up here by, you know, like, well, minions aside. <laughs> oh, neighbors, neighbors just don't pile in to your house. Not ours, anyway. I would never go to somebody's house unannounced. Ever. Even if it was my kid's house. That's just so rude. That's just me, though. Especially after living out in the weeds for a long time. <laughs> you could spot them coming 300 feet away. and <laughs> That's not good for them. Whoever it may be. We didn't get solicitors or salespeople or anything. One time we had some knuckleheads selling steaks that they probably stole from somewhere. But they lasted about five seconds as soon as I opened the door and said, Get them! <laughs> to the dogs. They jumped in their truck and split. Now how did that get up? See this? That's my magnet. How did that get over there? <laughs> my magnet likes to attach itself to stuff. And this is trash. Well, not trash. Somebody could use it for something. Okay. Wait, you know what? This was out on the desk. Because I think I found it when I was playing with these jewelry right before I was, when I was closing out last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Get off. Now, I've had enough of your impudence. Did your mom who's ever say, how, the impudence, or how impudent? <laughs> My mother did. <laughs> that meant you were a smart aleck and a dope in the same sense, in the same word. And... A low-life creature. <laughs> okay, this is what I was trying to show you yesterday as I was fiddling with it as I was closing out. This is a three-strand, which I like because it could be a five-strand. And I might just make it into a five-strand. It has a meshy necklace. It has a faux pearl and glass. And then a really loose rope. Really pretty. Gold tone with a hook closure. And an extender. And this will be two dollars. It is it is vintage. It will not run from this pile of oh no. Okay, this is garbage or craft stuff. My mommy used garbage too. Me thinks this used to be a Purse charm. Mm hmm. And a keychain. Yep. And, uh, this is Faith. Oh, actually, it's pretty cute. And it is a magnetic necklace. Oh, and it cleaned right up. Wow. Okay. Silver tone. It has rhinestones, a little bit of metallic uh, leatherish stuff, and faith, and some more metallic and some cotton corning. That's pretty cute. It would be two dollars. I let's see another shell necklace. This is like the other one. Little baby shells.
There's no writing on this. This is just a chain, cable chain. I haven't put it in a bag. So, because why? It just won't get tangled up with the other stuff. Because men are likey. When y'all order, I'm digging through stuff, and I'm digging through stuff, and it churns it. <laughs> and when it churns it, it makes it into a bigger mess than you see here. And I'm, trust me, I'm serious. I put in everything really neat. I lay the necklaces down. And then I get into the bucket. There's a bigger bucket than what y'all have, okay? And I get into a bucket. And then I start churning it because I'm trying to find a particular necklace or whatever. And it churns it up. And when it churns it up, it tangles it all over again. No good. So I try to keep the little chains in a bag. Because <clears throat> they do this, see? Little bitty skinny chains do this. You hear the thunder? If we lose power, it'll just cut off and I'll say, hey, I'm back. Because <laughs> it doesn't stay out for long. It's a regular, um, those of you, us that live in the South know, it's a regular pattern for the spring and summer. Between three and six, almost every day, it'll <clears throat> either lightly rain or thunderstorm. And then like y'all in Texas and, and Oklahoma and Kansas and stuff, it's uh, Tornado Alley. So not only do you have to deal with thunderstorms, but uh, you got tornadoes too. I do not like tornadoes. One chased me home one day. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And I was in my Corvette and couldn't outrun it. It made a left-hand turn. Anybody that knows the Dallas Metro Mess area, that means Metroplex. So that's between Dallas and Fort Worth. They're like two little wagon wheels. Dallas over here in the east and Fort Worth over there. And in between you got three interstates. 183, 121, and something else. And then down in the middle of the two little wagon wheels, you got I-35E on this side and I-35 West this side. And then 30 runs here. And then 20 runs there. And then 10's way down by the border. Okay. So. It had to be a Saturday because I was getting off at 6. And you know, the sky was just not looking good at all. And then somebody, uh, we always had, somebody had a radio on in our office somewhere. I was selling cars and, uh. They heard tornadoes on the ground in Fort Worth. That's only 30 miles straight shot on I-30. <laughs> oh, hell no. I'm out of here, yo. And I got kids. I'm out. So I split. And to get home, I was, here was Dallas. Here's Fort Worth. I was straight south of Dallas like this. To get home, I had to come up here and hook a right on I-30 and then go to I-80 or 635. But I decided to be a smart alecky and go up here and take uh, something around, loop 12 or something around. So if I made a left, I think I would miss the, the tornado because it was going straight east and it was going about 20 miles an hour. It was hauling butt. And I was in a Corvette, which you know and I know is a fiberglass with a couple pieces of steel. <laughs> So, okay, well, I'm going to make a left here and go around the whole wagon wheel thing. And then I would get off down here at I-80 and go home. Well, guess what? The tornado made a left turn and followed it all the way around. It was right behind me. I had the window down because ahead of the storm, ahead of the tornado, there's no, I guess, real quiet. There, and the wind picks up a little bit if it gets real, real dark. Okay. Ooh, that's a coral. And, um, <laughs> so I had the window down and I kept looking back because in back of me was just like the black Godzilla. 
it was totally black outside, and it was six o'clock in the evening on a summer afternoon, so uh, it wasn't black. Yet. It was so dark. And then when there's tornadoes coming and hail, it gets a green cast to it. That's danger plus danger zone. That is so bad. I mean, that's hit the deck time. Well, it was too late. I couldn't hit the deck. I couldn't do nothing. I was in a Corvette. That was going to be a flying uh, <laughs> saucer. <laughs> so I, I blasted it. I was going like 90. The tornado, and the, I'm not lying. The tornado was right on my tail. And it started to come around me. And so the thunderstorms were right ahead of the tornado. I was out here going around this curve and the thunder clapped so close to my car that I was deaf in my left ear for like two weeks. I got hear nothing. I got around and got home and I busted in the door because it was so dark outside. You couldn't see nothing and it was the sirens were going off in, in tornado country. We have tornado sirens just and we don't have cellars now no root cellars maybe out in the country but not where I live and uh, my nanny my daughter and my son were in my bathroom she's running around blessing everything <laughs> and I'm like oh good now everybody get in my bathtub which was I always kept a single mattress in my closet because when if a tornado hits your house, you better get under the mattress in a single bathtub and pray. That's all. So we did, and it passed. It sounds like a freight train is coming through your house. It's the most terrifying sound I've ever heard in my life. That's the closest I ever came to one because it went right in my neighborhood. And I thought we were toast, but we were all mashed up in that bathtub. Three, four people. Three of us were adults. Size. Anyway, it passed. We all got out. Everybody came out in the neighborhood. Every single roof was damaged but ours. I swear. I think it's because my babysitter was like this. It had roses and rosaries and she was blessing the whole house. And I promise, that's that's a true story. <laughs> yep, that was a true story. And to this day when I hear thunderstorms, it reminds me of that day. Okay, so y'all can see this. This says, Coro. Come on, man. There, it does say coral. In cursive, for those who doesn't can't who doesn't haha, <laughs> who can't read cursive, read a book, okay. Uh, yeah, that was the um. Yeah, that was scary. When we first moved to East Texas from California, no less. This one, I have to put another strand on right here. See that. And I do have more of this kind of rosette type of chain in here. Probably I just dumped it in there. In the, uh, yeah, I got some somewhere. Oh, check it. That's the same kind as that one. Okay, I'll use this one. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so. When we first moved to East Texas, East East Texas, I was six miles from Louisiana. Okay, that's how east I was. Straight down I-20. Uh, and it was in Pass Marshall, a place called DeBerry, Texas. That's about a country you get. And uh, the first time we had a thunderstorm, now, being from L.A., we had rain. And there would be thunder sometimes, but nothing like when you're on a 150-acre ranch, okay? <laughs> nothing. Because we didn't have no lights out there. There was no lights. There was no anything. 
there was no street lights. Nothing. And we had a horse, she, they had a horse farm. My friend Cindy and her husband had a horse farm. And, you know, so we had three channels. I told you this about having three channels on the TV. So we were watching probably Moonlighting or one of those shows. It was ABC, CBS, or NBC. That's it. That's all we got. Because there wasn't any uh, satellite or anything back in the day. That was 1985. And so I was in the kitchen cooking, and I could see the TV right over there, but I wasn't paying attention because I was cooking. And my daughter, who was very smart, <laughs> Jimmy was 10, so she was 6. She said, Mama, Mama, what does it mean? And then she started naming off these counties, and Harrison County, I think, was the one we were in, has issued a thunderstorm warning for the following counties, blah, 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 and tornado warning. Now watch. Warning. Warning means there's been one spotted on the ground, and I went, Oh, and J my oldest says, oh, you know, Christina, like in The Wizard of Oz, where the tornado takes the house up and they go and they see The Wizard of Oz and the Wicked Witch and stuff, and my daughter freaked the hell out. <laughs> so it started to get really, really dark, and this was in August. Bad time. Right in the middle of hur hurricane out here and tornado season out there. So we got up on the couch and we were looking out the window at the ranch and you could see we're kind of up on a hill you could see the whole ranch basically from our window when the lightning struck you could it lit up the whole ranch in the eeriest light you've ever seen so all three of us were huddled up huddled up and the dogs were too they were scared death and we're all five of us up on the couch watching out the window and it was a lesson in mama what's they she didn't have to ask that anymore but when she saw it on the TV because they would take over your TV and run it across the bottom of your TV even if you were not watching the news and everybody had turn into sirens there so yeah tornadoes I would rather knock on wood have a hurricane because you could see it coming you can prepare for it it pops up in the Atlantic, and you see it hanging around and getting bigger and going sideways or whatever. But you can't see a, her, a tornado. It we call the devil's tongue. Just imagine you see a black green cloud, and all of a sudden this thing, this pointy thing comes out of the sky like this. And it comes down and down. That's like a snake tongue. comes down and down, and all of a sudden it hits the ground, and then it starts to move. It is the ickiest, creepiest scariest stuff and my girls in Texas and Kansas and Missouri and Oklahoma will testify to that I do not like tornadoes this is Morty Grodd no good at all so we've been through a lot of hurricanes over here I was in Texas 11 years. I've been here 27 years. Monster Manus. And like I said, you can prepare for a hurricane. You can get the hell out of Dodge. You can leave your home and let the looters come take you away. When we lived in Jacksonville, we never even thought about leaving the house because there was looters. Roving bands of looters. People would leave their property and, you know, they, every time a hurricane was even close, they'd leave their property, and their property would get robbed every time. So, no, we don't leave. Especially now at our age. No, not happening. We're going down with a ship. Your captain and her admiral. Anyway, you can prepare. We have generators. You know, we have places that we can hide out over here. 
everything's cool, but tornadoes come out of nowhere. But you can tell the signs in the sky. I do not like tornadoes. And hail, oh lord. Hail can do more damage to a house than, than a hurricane can, actually, because it punches holes. My son, my littlest, who's now going to be 36 this year, when he was five, after that storm, the hail was the size of softballs, softballs. So he took it, one hail stone that he found in our yard, which was, or I think it was the backyard, the size of a softball. And he, I said, wrap it up in a full and then put it in baggies and you can save it. And he saved it for years till we moved to Florida. And they got 